So. Alrighty, in the bottom left corner, representing Ampers, we have J Mike. In the top right corner, representing Fires, we have Rainforest as the blue Terran. I don't know why this shouldn't have changed. Well, unfortunately it did change, so I'm going to have to roll it old school, I guess, in a way it's okay. Let me also put this on full screen mode here, that way we can run it at a higher hertz. Probe is going to go ahead and harass that barracks, try to delay it just a small bit. Looks like the other SUVs are going to come to assist and make sure that is not the problem. Looks like Probe's going to go ahead and give up on the mission. Just made him pull a couple boys is all. Doesn't seem like anything too tricky is going on yet. Just kind of doing the normal play. Cybernetics Core going to come out for the Protoss. Looks like Protoss is going to do the uh, right thing and go ahead and block off this second location. Trying to stop him from making a command center. If I was him, I'd just make the command center next to it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Nexus is going to get put down for the Protoss. So both players opting to go for a more macro early uh, style. Reaper is going to pop out very shortly, but it looks like it might be double Reaper. Not sure if that's normal or not. And I will admit I'm a Zerg player, so my knowledge of TVP is currently pretty low, but looks like two Reapers are going to come out. The first one is out already. The second one is going to be a little bit of a delay, so I wonder if he's going for Bio since he's going double barracks, I would assume so. Reaper is going to be able to scout this Stargate here. He is going to get one probe from this. The Adept is going to show up. He's gotten one probe, and it looks like he will get two probes for the possible price of a Reaper. Nope, Reaper's fine. He's just going to go ahead and get out of here. Pretty good decision by him not to stay. Double Reaper is going to go ahead and chillax. Does have an SCV at the Zell Naga Tower. Double Reaper is going to come in to fight the Adept, but he is going to lose this Reaper. Oof, that is not what he wanted to happen there. Hard to double Reaper harass when you lose a Reaper, but he is going to be able to get in here and do a little bit of damage. Will he hit the already hurt one? It looks like he'll just go for this one. And it's like he is going to go ahead and try to dip out once again. He might lose the Reaper. No, he will not. He will get out safely. Looking at the Terran, he is making some Marines. It does look like an Oracle is about to pop. I'm not sure if he... I'm pretty sure he saw the uh, Stargator. At least he should have if he clicked the building next to his Reaper. It looks like the Reaper is going to get picked off eventually by the Adept over here. It's either that or he's a little behind on getting his air defense. Or he just feels he can defend whatever's coming out of the Stargate with his Marines. Either way, it might be a little bit painful for the Terran if he doesn't have something very soon. <clears throat> Twilight Council is going to go ahead and finish and it is going to be another two gates being thrown down. Oracle is going to go ahead and come around the corner towards the second. Or even first of Rainforest. So we'll see what this Oracle can do. There's no air defense besides for Marines, which the Marines are in an odd spot. He should have been able to scout the Stargate. So we'll see if he's able to do any damage. Looks like Oracle is going to go ahead and power on. We got one kill. Nearly two. Not as much damage as you would have think. I think he missed Micro just a little bit with the Oracle. Bit of an unfortunate timing there. 
He's going to go ahead and... Oh, oh, I was going to say he tried to pick off one Marine. Was not going to happen. It looks like he's gotten three pickoffs so far. Possibly four with this. It looks like it's going to be at the four mark. Killed a Marine and three, three SCVs. Looking at the economy chart, we're looking at a 1,700 mineral and a 1,400 for the Terrence. So J. Mike in a decent spot right now. Uh, upgrades are coming out for the uh, Terran. Charge lots looks like is going to be the option for the uh, Protoss. Not a bad choice at all against Bio. Is making another gateway as we speak. So got a couple Phoenixes out on the map. Not often I see Phoenix against Terran. Bit interesting. Maybe to stop Vikings in case he goes Colossus. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe he just wants to be annoying. And Oh, he could take out the Medivacs with him actually. That's probably what he's doing or pick up the tanks. Or, I don't think Phoenix can pick up tanks, actually. It's been a hot minute, but I'm pretty sure they can't. It's been a hot minute since I've played either race, so... Oracle is going to come back around this corner, but there is a turret up now, so it's not going to get much damage. It is going to get hit twice, and then it's going to back off. There is a scan coming out for the Terran. Looking at the second base, he's going to see three Zealots, another Zealot warping in. Stalker is going to see this medevac coming across the map. Will the Phoenix go out and kill it? Maybe, maybe not. It does look like the Zealots are moving out, but not quite the fight he's wanting right now. He needs to back off and pick off the uh, medevacs with the Phoenix. Does not look like he's going to have enough army, though, in general, for what is coming. This is a pretty big Terran push at this moment. Charge lots are going to come out, but it does not look like he's going to have enough. Phoenixes are going to try to jump around the medevacs and slowly pick them off, but he is going to micro him. He is going to pick off a couple Phoenix, and it does look like these Phoenixes are going to have a little bit of trouble, but there is not enough army for this Protoss. A couple more Zealots are going to be go coming in, but it does not look like it's going to be able to do enough damage. I didn't think Phoenix could actually pick up tanks, but I guess I was wrong twice on the guess there. He is going to go ahead and pick up the rest of the Phoenix, and these Zealots are going to die, and it does look like this Terran is in a really good spot. A Liberator is going to go ahead and set up. This is actually really painful for J. Mike, and it looks like the first game is going to get that. Now, you got to wonder if J. Mike is going to do something different or if he's just going to go for standard again. Since the first game didn't quite go his way, in my my eyes, I would assume that he's going to go with something just a little bit more cheesy. But that's just me. That could be wrong. It looks like he is going to opt for an early guess, and he hasn't made a gateway yet. So I am going to assume it's something proxy related. I'm not 100% sure, but I just assume it's going to be proxy related. Possibly not. Maybe it's just a standard old timing. This gateway... Uh, Gateway and gas is going to be for the Protoss. The ramp is a little bit different this time around. So he is going to come in here and annoy that SCV again. Really not wanting that SCV to finish. This time he might commit. No, he's not going to commit. He's going to go ahead and look. There is a gas taken already. So he can expect it to be another Reaper. Reaper start. He is just kind of bringing this SCV for the ride. He is just going to block the second again. I swear Protoss has a lot of practice. A lot of Protosses have practice doing this because they are really good at dodging around on the mineral line or on the uh, second base. But it does look like this Terran is going to bring him down to one shot and be able to make this here CC in just one moment. J Mike going to go ahead and go for the Nexus as well. Looks like he's going for the Expand. It looks relatively the same as last game. Nothing much has changed thus far. But maybe this time J. Mike's going to go for a little bit more unit heavy since he struggled to have enough units in the long run. I would assume that's what he's doing, but I'm not 100% at the same time. Pretty early. We'll see. Another gas and pylon coming out. Adept is going to go ahead and be... Oh, actually, he's going to go ahead and opt for the Stalker first. Interesting. I don't know if I like the Stalker first or not. I'm not sure what he's... Maybe to help defend the Medivacs if they're coming early? That's not a like the Adept. The 
Reaper actually taking a minute to get in there and do damage to the mineral line. The Stalker is going to pop out now, and the Reaper is going to start taking damage. Will he be able to pull the Reaper in time? It looks like it might actually... No, it's not going to die. It actually just kind of gets out again. It seems like it always gets away with like 1 HP. Pretty lucky timings to be leaving each time. Looks like a tech lab is going to be researched, so it is going to be Stim Bio again by the looks of it. Looks like Gateway is going to be... Or Warp Gate is going to be uh, researched and Twilight Council is going to finish again. This time he's opting for Blink. It looks like he's going to go for Blink Stalker versus this Bio Army, which he saw the Reaper early, but he hasn't really scouted that this is a Bio build. But I assume he's just guessing from the last game that it's going to be a Bio build. Stalker is going to come in and do a little bit of harass, but instead he is just going to get picked off, it looks like. Rainforest is going to go ahead and back off and just kind of do his thing. I think he's a little nervous that this is a Stalker all-in. Seeing one Stalker can be indication that there is going to be Blink Stalker at his ramp suit. With that being said, he is starting to move across a little bit. With these stalkers, it looks like he's making quite a few of them. He's wanting to kind of move out and mess with this Terran. He is going to go ahead and kill that that there unbuildable block. Just trying to make sure that he's not going to accidentally A move down his ramp and hit that thing like I've done a hundred times. Probe is going to go ahead and make a third base, trying to make sure that he's got the macro macro portion down. Stalker's thinking about going in, but not quite making up their mind. Blink about to finish. There's three Stalkers, but there is a ton of Marines here. Oh no. He's about to pick off one of these Stalkers. He picks off one of the Stalkers. Blink not quite finished yet. These two Stalkers, just not, not too much on the Stalker count. Just kind of trying to get his economy up. Looking at the economy, I accidentally... Alt tabbed, my bad there guys. Looking at the economy, it looks like it's pretty even for the most part. Terran slightly going over the uh, Protoss, allowing him to get a little bit of an economical advantage. Even though it seems like... Wow. Assume soon the Protoss will be moving his boys from that base to the next, which looks like he is going to go ahead and saturate those gases instead. Opting for the uh, gas saturation, being able to make more gas heavy units. He did just make a sentry and leave it at the base. Looking across the map, looks like Proxy, or not Proxy, uh, Ghost Phoenix is going to move across, or hallucinated I should say, in proper term. Stalkers are going to go ahead and blink out knowing that this bio is going to be a little bit too much. Charge lot is on the way. It is almost finished, but it's not quite finished. These stalkers are in trouble. Looks like he was doing something at the main. He's going to have to back off. He's got two stock. He's got two zealots with this army, but this time it's a little bit not as bad as the first time, but this time it's still going to be a little bit hard. It does look like he's going to have more units for this time around. The Rainforest is just so far ahead in supply. They are about dead even on workers, but army-wise, Protoss is having to catch up right now. And now is the time for the fight. The Zealots are going to go in wild towards the tank. These Marines are trying their darndest to get the kills on these Stalkers, but the Stalkers are going to try to get a few picks off. The Stalker is going to drop, and there is going to be a turret coming out for the Terran just in case he tries to do anything with Phoenix or air units. Liberator is going to come out here, and it does look like these Liberator is going to set up on top of the Stalkers. The Stalkers having to blink out, but not quite blinking them all out. A couple of Stalkers are going to get picked off in the meanwhile. It does look like Rainforest is going to get the choke here, and the tank is going to go ahead and be able to set up here. Actually, I think the tank actually got picked off. The Liberator got picked off as well. He's going to try to pick off the other other liberator but he's not going to be able to the stalker is just not enough he is going to make more stalkers to be able to pick off this liberator he needs to pick it off now if he wants to be able to get in there he needs to just focus down the liberator he's letting it do it too much damage the stalkers are going to slowly move out towards these marines but the marines have done a decent amount of damage right here right now it looks like these stalkers are going to go ahead and head out against this turret and it looks like the uh 
Protoss wants to move across the map. I don't know if this is the right call. Rainforest does have a lot of units. Doesn't seem like it right this second because they're not across the map yet. But as far as the army difference, there is a decent amount of army difference between the two players. Unless he's going to get something along the lines of a bunch of zealots in charge. He's going to be in a very rough shape. These stalkers are going to go ahead and pick off this liberator. They are going to try to fight in the choke. He blinked all of his stalkers instead of blinking individual stalkers. Very rough situation for J. Mike here. Liberator is going to set up in the choke once again. He is over by the rocks. One Marine is going to move over and get hit, but re realizes what's going on with the Marine and sends him back. He is just slowly bunching up his units. His Liberators are going to show up and probably block off two different regions. These Stalkers are going to go ahead and take the fight, though. These Marines are going to fight into the Stalkers. The Stalkers are going to blink out immediately after picking off the Liberator. Not a bad call to set up the Liberator. I just think it needed to be defended by the Marines just a little bit sooner for it to be better. But the Liberator is slowly inching its way forward. The Stalkers are split right now. There's two Zealots, but they're at the very back. It's not really enough Zealots for my liking for the style that he's going, but these Stalkers are going to slowly push in here, and this Liberator is going to slowly get picked off, but not enough. Focus was put down. Marines are going to slowly push through the Stalkers. There's only a couple Stalkers with low health here. He's going to shove through, and it looks like he is going to be able to shred through this Protoss army with the upgrades coming in right at the last second. Zealot is going to get picked. The armor upgrade almost finished for the Terran. Terran is going to slowly push down this base, and it looks like Rainforest is going to be able to take this match 2-0. He's taking all these probes. That is a lot of workers killed as we speak. That is very, very painful. It looks like this base is going to fall, and there are six more stalkers being called, but there is just not enough for this Protoss. This, this Terran has a double tank set up with the Liberator coming up onto the ramp. The tank is going to slowly aggro onto the stalkers. The stalkers are going to blink and take the Liberator. Marines are going to slowly push up the ramp. They are going to be able to take away the gateways, but this, the Stalkers just can't do anything. And I think GG will be called very shortly because these Marines are not stopping for nothing. You cannot stop the music. And it does look like he is going to be able to do some damage. And it, Rainforest is going to take it. And GG is called. One of my favorite matchups. In the bottom left corner, representing... Paused. I didn't know I could still move and pause. Okay, looks like he fixed. Game resumed. In the bottom left corner, representing fires, we have still fly. In the top right corner, representing T Gosu C, we have malice or malice. I'm not sure. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. If you watch the vod later, much apologies. Extractor trick to get an extra drone out. Wonder if that was an accidental overdrone. Happens. Either that or they're trying to get a certain amount of drones out faster, but not something I ever do. Even if I make the mistake, I just kinda sulk with my own pain. With sorrow and much other things. Still fly about to make his second base. Bit of a greedy second coming out from Melis, going opting for an 18 hatch, 18 gas, and I, I assume 18 pool, unless they're going 17 pool. <laughs> Might be 17 pool. Definitely 17. So 18, 18, 17. A little bit greedy, but not too bad overall. I prefer my timing. I do. I think I personally do 16. 16, 17, 16. Seems to time out pretty well with the way that I play. Spawning pull a little bit distant between both players, both having different timings on their buildings. Hatch is going to finish for still fly first. Melissa is opting for a second gas. The only thing I can think of that would uh, need for a second gas is roaches. This early, unless opting for an early lair into Mutalisk. But 
I'm going to assume this is going to be Roach. We'll see. Either that or bring Bane all in with need for gas. I don't think you need that much gas for Bane's, though. I think it's probably Roach's. Assuming they're going to saturate it. Once they saturate it, I'll kind of have an idea. Looks like a couple sets of Lings are going to come across the map for the yellow Zerg. The green Zerg is going to opt to keep his Lings in his base. Not really trying to scout too much. Use the Overlord to do so. Queen is going to choose to inject over actually killing the Overlord. Two Queens are going to kill this Overlord over here. Liss is going to become supply blocked off of that. Got four sets of Lings. Oh, got a lot more than four sets of Lings and is going to opt to try and snipe this third. Which is really painful because it is going to get it. It is going to stop it. Melissa could opt to get a third if she wants, but it does. She or he looks like they are going to opt for a baneling nest after all. Not opting to actually fill the second gas that they started. Kind of a either an oops or maybe doesn't need the gas right now. Maybe opting for it in case they need to swap to gas. Spine crawler is going to come out in the second base of Still Fly. Another spine crawler is going to come out as we speak. He is going opting for the melee upgrade. Melee upgrade is really good if you're able to hold on for that long. That's the only issue, and I don't feel like Still Fly is opting for Banelings. Actually, he is opting for Banelings, but it's pretty late. It's going to really, really hurt here. Melissa has a lot of Banelings walking into this base right now, and that's going to be very painful. He, does, he is going to walk the... Oh, Melissa accidentally hitting the wrong target these queens are going to be able to block it he is going to be able to block it that is insane that should not have lived as well as it did the two queens are going to fight the lings at the bottom of the ramp the spine is going to go ahead and stab all these lings another queen is going to try to come down the ramp but this is going to be a boy versus the lings it looks like he's not going to opt for the drones to fight the queens are going to go ahead and fight with their lives he needs to use the he needs to use the energy on his third queen but it doesn't look like he's opting to his lings are going to be able to clean it up as we speak and oh my that was a very rough fight for Melis, making a few minor mistakes, causing a lot of issues here in the early. He is going to opt to try and still move across the map. The one upgrade is going to slowly come out for uh, Still Fly. Still Fly needing to get more lings coming out very shortly. He's still on two bases, and so is Melis. He's, he should be able to know that. Lings are going to try to go across the map, but he should know at this point that they are all in. These are Banelings and Lings about to be coming, and these two queens are too low. He needs to back these queens up now, or he's going to lose them. Looks like he is going to opt to make more spines, but it's just a little too late. He needs to wall off this ramp if he's wanting to survive. He is going to move the spine forward, move the queens up to try and defend this, but this is a lot of Banelings. He needs to pull the boys from the second right now. If he doesn't, he's in trouble. This time, not going to make the same mistake. Is going to run him right on through. And Banelings are going to connect with all these drones. That was a very painful connection. 12 drones lost on that one. Very, very painful. Banes are very painful. Needed to either wall off or B send the drones to the second. And then block off with his two queens. But both queens are pretty low in health. So that would be a really hard hold. He would have to swap the queen, the fifth queen. And do that. Uh, I think he just made a minor mistake with trying to keep right where he was. And he should have opted to block off or... But it looks like he is going to sought after re-droning up. He is quite a bit of workers behind. He's about, you know, nine workers behind right now. These lings are going to try to fight the yellow lings and they're not quite going to work out for him. More green lings are going to move across the map does have Baneling Nest, not opting to make any Banelings prior to getting over there. So it does look like he's going to end up running into these two Banes if he's not careful. And it does look like it's going to be painful. He is going to lose quite a few Lings to the Banes. But his, oh, his one upgrade on his attack is actually quite powerful for these Lings. Causing it to be really hard to stop him. They are doing a, quite a bit of damage here in the early. He is going to opt for Muta. Uh, the other Zerg does have queens, but they do have enough energy to transfuse. So even if he did try, he's not going to be able to get enough damage done to these queens. Unfortunately, third base is going to be restarted for Melissa. And it does look like Stillfly needs to start his base back up. He needs to make more Lings and needs to make more Banes to defend with. I, f I just feel like he does not have enough units at these attacks. And he's really going to regret it in just a second because he's not able to expand to a third base after sniping a third base. 
very unfortunate. He is going to go ahead and go up here and check and see if he's got a third up high, but he does not have a secret ninja third. He's also checking the bottom corner just to make sure no ninja ninja moves are being done right now. But there is not an economy being built right now for still fly, and that's really, really hurting him as we speak. I think... I think he's opting for too much at once as well. I think Roach Roach speed is not a good idea if you're going to opt for Muta, but it does look like Orange is also opting for Muta and Roach speed. I just don't feel like either player is on an economical standpoint to be doing that, in my opinion. So we'll see where they go with this. They could opt for Roaches. They might opt for Muta. It looks like three Muta are going to come out for uh, Melis. And it does look like a bunch of roaches are going to pop for still fly. So opting to kind of go towards that roach style when I think Muta should have been the call here. Simply because uh, he's got the uh, melee upgrade so he could go Ling, Bane, uh, Muta. But it does look like he's going to opt for Nidus. Going for Nidus all in. It's going to be really hard especially since he's about to be popping out some Mutas. And he does not have overlords in place for this play. So it could be potentially really, really rough. It does look like he's going to start moving that way, but these Mutas are going to notice this Overseer. Now he knows that there is air to deal with what he's trying to do. That is very unfortunate. He is going to lose this Overseer to the Mutas, which he was going to go Muta, but opted not to go Muta. And I thought since both of them were getting the upgrades, they might both go Roaches, but... I think Melissa's in a really good point right now. Going to be able to hold this pretty easily, I think. I don't even think it's going to be able to start. Kind of a rough place to start it. If you want to start it, I would start it here and move my way through. There you go. He is going to go ahead and do that and make sure he's able to push through really fast. Is going to move across the map with all these units, though, and there's not really that much to defend at the home base other than a couple spores and one spine. It does look like he is going to knight us across the map. These roaches are going to slowly move across the map. He is going to go ahead and cancel that third base. He's going to try to hold with what he has here. It does look like he's going to drop out a couple queens, but that is not enough for all these mutas. These mutas are going to try to snipe. There is a couple spores here, so they might be able to defend. All these Muta, these Mutas are actually not doing as much damage as you would think, and there is some drone sniping being done at this base. Not much is being lost here yet for Still Fly, but there is a lot of Banes coming into this base if he does not run these drones out of here, but he's not retreating these drones so far, trying to keep it blocked with all these Roaches. All those Banes just wasted into those Roaches, but there's just too many Lings at this moment for it to matter. More Roaches are going to go ahead and pop, but they are literally walking. This is very, very painful to watch. Still Fly having a little bit of trouble here dealing with this. GG is going to be called, and it looks like Melis is going to go ahead and take this. They both lost their third, or maybe not. Man, I thought he was calling GG, but it looks like it's still 1-1. The Roaches are going to move across the map once again, trying to get some more pickoffs down. But now he sniped the Nidus, so there is no retreats. There's quite a bit of Muta here, and he is going to pick off all these queens, but I don't know if it's worth it for the weight loss of all these Roaches, and it is going to be Melissa that takes the two. Going to be in the bottom right corner, representing Ryzen community. We have Neverwinter in the... Top left corner representing T Gosu C. We have Malice or Malice. Still not sure which one's the pronunciation. Should have probably asked before we started the game. That way I'm not butchering the name the whole way through. But you know what? We're we, we not wise. Looks like an er gas is going to come out for Neverwinter and it is going to be early gas, early pull. So a little bit of cheesiness coming out from the Zerg player, unless he's going to do a. I assume it was a 13-13 or 12-13. And if it was, it could either be a full-on all-in or it's going to be a six-ling harass into macro. Which, I'm pretty sure it'll probably be all-in. Just by the fact that there's a lot of drones in this gas. Malice is not sending a drone over to scout, so might be a light scout on this. Is going to opt for hatch first and probably did the late hatch as well. 
if so, is going to get punished pretty hard by this Zerg, who is making six lings as we speak with his second hatch. It does look like he's going to do the lings. Is he going to opt to go full on all in and keep making lings, or is he going to opt to back off on lings and start droning? Overlord is going to pop. He is keeping his lings hidden. So I think he's just going to hide it and flood it. I think that's what he's going to do, which I think it's a really hard build. can be a really hard build to pull off properly, especially if they get an early baneling nest, which depending on if they notice, which they should notice once they see the base timing. Because it is quite a ways distant. It's like a decent amount of distance away that it should kind of give off that that feeling. He is going to send one drone from the main line to make it even look like you know that the timing is weird but he is going to see that this base is not popped yet and his has been popped for a solid minute he's got queens on the way so it's safe to assume that this is going to be a ling flood and i think he knows i would think but he might not know he's making a lot of links too though so this is quite a bit of links but these are going to be speed links running across the map very shortly so it's going to be slow links versus fast links if they meet up in the middle don't think they're going to end up meeting up in the middle though it looks like these speed links are going to move across the map are these slow links going to try to turn around and face it or are they going to go straight forward they are going to turn around this is going to be a slow battle brothers spine is going to come out finally i'm surprised melissa didn't notice that that was coming but these lings are going to be coming up the ramp, but he was unable to block it properly. And this is going to be very painful. These speed lings are going to get onto the queen. He is just unprepared for the defense. These blue lings trying to catch off the reinforcements. A couple blue lings are going to get picked off in the main. The red, red zerg is going to be able to pick off all of these zerglings. And he's going to be able to get all the drones. He is going to try to go up into the main. He's not even going to focus the second base. He's just going to go straight into the main and kill the drones. And GG is called. And Neverwinter is going to take the first game of this series in that regard just because that happened looks like neverwinter is going to opt to go the same build or not same build go back to normal build and it looks like malice is the one that's going to I don't know if they do that every game or if that was just an accident. I assume an accident. That puts him pretty far behind on the uh, supply train. Got one more worker, but in the end, just less supply. Because he caught up. I don't know. I just do not like the extractor trick, especially if it's unnecessary. Bit of delay delayed hatch from malice i think they like to opt for a higher supply before they make their hatch kind of an interesting play to say the least could kind of throw him off a little bit too if he noticed but it's not that far back enough that i think it would be a threat and i assume he will notice that once he does look at it malice choosing to put his overlord over his second Noticing that that's what he's doing, he's going to go ahead and send it out across the map now. Bit of a late overlord, but it happens to the best of us in every matchup just about. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Thanks, friend. Oof, I don't know how to open up where I can... Damn. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Don't know this client enough. I have a plan though. Yeah, that should be better. It'll Neverwinter is going to go choose to block off his ramp, actually, with lings. I've never seen that before. Very interesting. Looking at the top right, it looks like Malice is going to get a decent clump of lings coming across the map. Kind of 
Okay, a couple Banes coming out for Neverwinter. Going to be able to defend this pretty easily. Nothing to really be too scared of. Link Speed is going to come out faster for Malice, but... Not going to have Bane Links to power it up, though, unfortunately. So, Bane Link Nest is coming out, but it's going to be way late. And this one Bane Link is going to do a, a lot of damage. That is unfortunate timing right there for the poor Zerg player. Having a little bit of trouble here. Let's do this. That way I quit having issues. Ah, there we go. Bunch of Ling's gonna come off to the right side, moving across the map. He's gonna be able to do a decent amount of damage with this. One Ling is gonna come in just to see what he's up to. There was a Bane at the top, so it would have got collided with. Neverwinter is going to opt to go into this base here. With the one Ling, he's not going to decide to overcommit right now, and he's going to see a bunch of Bane Lings. Oops, one Bane Ling is going to be wasted on this. He's going to go ahead and make more Banes, but he's trying his best not to let his Banes die, and it does look like both those Banes are going to end up dying. Trying to think about getting more Bane Ling connections here. Needs to control both both Banes and Lings on different hotkeys to be able to avoid having them be killed off like that. Malice moving out across the map once again. Wanting to snipe that third base it looks like. Banes are going to start coming towards him. Is he going to be able to hit these connections? It looks like he almost was going to be able to, but then they backed off. So just kind of some slow Ling Bane play so far. Not too much happening. Not too many connections. One big one big connection to start the game off with Neverwinter hitting a pretty big bust. One Bane Ling sitting up at the top of the ramp right now, just chilling. Breathing pretty heavy there. Hope he's going to go get him. Go get him. Oof. Not, not the best connection ever, but not the worst. And there's not going to be any Lings or Banes at the home. And he does get a decent connection there again. And there is not that many Banelings here to stop all these Banelings from coming in. But it looks like he is going to be able to connect all of them. And the Lings are going to flood into the space of uh, Malice. Lings are going to be able to kill these off. And it does look like Neverwinter might be able to take this right now. So we're going to see... If he does, he will advance to the next round, which will be semi-finals. Depending on who wins the uh, second round of the match of the person he would be facing will de determine who his opponent is, but might have soft-spoken. We're going to see. There is a Spire being worked on by the side of Neverwinter, but there is Roaches on the side of Malice, but he does not have much economy to back that up as we speak. So I'm going to assume that these links should be decent enough as long as he doesn't get hit too hard with the Banes, which he realizes pretty quickly and doesn't throw away too many. But there is still one more Bane in this army, and he's throwing the links into the Roaches. Ling's wanting to make an engage, but it's just too hard with that Bane Ling being right there. Oh, the Bane Ling almost connecting again. Just choosing really hard to hold it. He is trying to bait it to the best of his ability, because if he can get that Bane Ling out of that army, he can just wrap those Roaches and kill him. I think he's aware of that, so he's trying very hard not to let that happen. Just picking off a couple Lings here and there. The Lings are going to slowly wrap around the Lings, but the Bane Ling is going to connect with his own unit, it almost looked like, or he just self-detonated for no reason. Getting a little bit too zealous. The Lings are going to chill out. Eight Muta are on the way. I don't think there's any air defense to stop the Muta. Mutalist Den Spire is going to go ahead and be started by Malice, so this is very interesting. Opting for early Roach, I guess, to help defend and then going for Muta. Not my cup of tea. Muta is going to be seen now for the side of Neverwinter. Is going to try to get as many pick offs as possible. Needs to move across the map. He is going to start pressuring that third base. And it looks like the Lings are going to be able to get it canceled. 
Muta are moving across. There is no spores, so this is a good time to hit. So hopefully Neverwinter will full-on commit. Looks like he is going to go, go ahead and full-on commit. He is going to try to take out the spore. And spore is going to get some bounces onto the onto the drones. Looks like two, three, four, five, six, seven. About seven drones and two spores were just killed in the in that base. Malice is moving his units back. So the Mutas are trying to pick off these queens, and they are going to be able to pick off the queens, and they are trying their darndest. Queens are unable to stop these Mutas. They are going to be able to pick off another Spore, and he's going to pick off the entire mineral line of the first base. Very unfortunate connection so far. Just unable to get any Spores made. These Mutas still doing a little bit of damage, but there is a counter push coming across the map, but there is a bunch of Spines and Links going to be able to hold this with the Banes as well, and this should be a pretty easy hold for Neverwinter and GG is called and Neverwinter is in the bottom right corner representing t uh, Risen we have Tommy Pickles as the purple Protoss in the top left corner representing T Gosu B we have Elite Slayer as the red Terran TVP, not familiar with both of them. <laughs> it is dumb luck that I got two Protoss in a row. Rip. Both are going for the Scout, Gas, and Gateway coming out for the Protoss. So far, pretty standard builds across both players. No one doing anything cheesy in the first one, it looks like. Well, never know. Something could happen. My boy Lebniz inventing calculus and trolling on StarCraft 2. Yes, sir. He is quite the major, that one. The Probe is going to go ahead and try to retreat. Trying to get as much vision as possible. Karen's just going to dip in real quick. Dip right out. Bobbing and weaving. Is going to go ahead and opt for the command center to be upgraded already. <laughs> I'm torn. <laughs> Poor Swarm Lord. You must support both of day players. <laughs> You'll be happy no matter the winner, right? Kappa Kappa. Another gas going to be taken by the Protoss. Uh, Cybernetics Core is going to finish. Not sure what he's opting for, I assume. Looks like it is going to be an Adept for the first unit. Reaper is coming across the map. Should be able to get this Adept out pretty shortly after the Reaper arrives. The Reaper doesn't go into the main initially. Right off the back and do some damage. He's not going to get too much done. This Adept is near finished. Don't think the Reaper is going to be able to do too much. Just able to kind of get in here, get a few pokes in, and get some vision down. Might be able to pick off one. He is able to pick off one, but at what? Okay, he didn't end up losing it, so no cost so far, unless that Adept shades right into it. Does not. No. Trying to find it, though. He's trying to make sure that Reaper isn't going to come back in and do his dirty little Reaper. Reaper shots. Got two t two marines at the bottom here. Extra shiny little marines. Got a stalker. And then... An adept and a stalker are out on the floor. Or floor. A warp gate is being researched with Blink. Reaper is going to be able to scout that this is being made. And since there's one stalker, it's probably safe to assume that that's what it is. Could have almost memed him with a zealot to make it appear to be charge charge lot, but early. But I guess he'll probably go for charge lot in the end either way. So probably doesn't need to mind game in the first place. Robotics facility is going to come out for the Protoss. Looks like he's opting for that warp prism or even immortals, either or, probably both. Warp prism, good unit. Adept is going to be able to shave me out of there. Bobbing and weaving, Lamau. <laughs> yes, sir. Got a sting like a butterfly sting like a bee, brother. Just butterfly sting, you know? 
I like this name, Tommy Pickles, though. Reminds me of the Rugrats. Hashtag childhood things. Treeper is chasing down this poor little probe. This probe is getting murdered, brothers. Oh no. That is not what that little probe wanted to see today. Just minding his minding his self, you know, trying to do some work and little did he know there was a reaper ready to reap his carcass right off the ground. Not that he needs to be off the ground. He's he's really tiny and probably probably really close to the ground, so. Another gas is going to be taken for the Protoss, making that a three gas play. He's got a decent amount of gas right now for the most part, but opting for that gas heavy style. Probably going to go for after the blink finishes. I assume he goes charge law, right? Probably charge lot zealot. Yep, that's what I thought. So he's going to opt for the zealot stalker, probably work towards Colossus or maybe even towards storm uh, disruptor. Either one. Not, not too familiar with the current Protoss style. This here Reaper is going to die to the three Stalkers. Attack the Nexus just a little bit, but not too much damage was really dealt, period. Just enough to annoy the Stalkers and get deleted. Quite a few Marines over here. Looks like he is going to go for the Bio, but a little late on Stim, in my opinion. I think Stim research is a little late. A couple Metavacs is going to be out very soon. I could be wrong on the... Stim. I'm not sure of the timing, but I seem it seems like this is really late to get stim. Especially since charge lot's already almost finished before his stim is even close. And there's a bunch of stalkers moving out towards this space. There is a tank at the top ground. He's gonna get a couple shots in on these stalkers. These stalkers are getting a little bit low. A little bit of damage there. Quite a bit of marines and a cut one tank should be enough to hold this for now. The observer. Might fly right above the tank and allow that those stalkers to pick it off though, but it would be like almost putting in his whole. Ooh, he is gonna go ahead and take that. He, he might. He is gonna be sacrificing these stalkers though, unless he can micro well enough to get them out of here. And he is gonna be able to get them out of there. The observer should know there's an observer right there and scan just because he came up onto the cliff. Oh, there's two observers here. That would be nasty if he picked both of those observers right now. Terran is going to opt to do some Widow Mine drops onto the Protoss, and he is unknowing of it too. And that is going to be four Widow or four probes picked by the Widow Mines. Stalkers are going to blink over the wall and go ahead and pick off these Widow Mines. Medivac is going to go ahead and dip out of there. The Stalkers are still right in front of the main or second of the Terran. Terran is going to unseach the tank. Is this a good time to do it? But it looks like he's going to decide it is. He is going to go ahead and stim a little bit early. He stimmed all of his units for what was almost like no no reason at that moment. I mean, I guess not no reason, but it just seemed like he stimmed everything really quickly there when he wasn't ready to quite to go in. Upgrades are about to finish for the Protoss. The Colossus are being made. Double Colossus are on the way. No Vikings are on the way at this moment, so just a tank marine army. These double Colossus should be researched just in time for this big fight, but I do not know how close of a battle this is going to be. Tommy Pickle's supply is just a little bit lacking compared to the Terran, but it should be a pretty close fight. Now the supply catching up at the very last second. Tommy Pickle's now having more units. This could be really bad for the Terran. There's double Colossus over here, and they are going to shred through those Marines. But the reaction time was a little bit slow by the Protoss and was unable to get too much off the beginning. But now he's looking like he's slowly pushing through this army of the Terran. The Terran has now lost a lot of army for that. Is going to lose all these medevacs that he is not moving across the map. This is very unfortunate for... Very unfortunate for Elite Slayer. Very, very rough. Went in pretty hard. And it seemed like at first he had a really good pick off. He got the double Colossus, which was a really good start to that. But Protoss ended up just rolling over him with, with the damage he had. So <laughs> Protoss style makes Zealots win games. GG. <laughs> At least I know that. 
Colossus is going to move across here. He is pretty low health, so he needs to make sure to micro that Colossus. He is going to do so. These Terran army is going to have some trouble. These Zealots are slowly pushing into him. He is going to go ahead and lift off the command center. He is going to siege up two tanks, and he is going to stay at a distance. These Zealots are going to get slowly picked, but it does look like these Zealots are going to push into these tanks, and he is not going to be able to hold this. The Terran is in deep trouble. I do not think he's able to hold this if the Protoss decides to go ahead and push right through. I think he can push right through, but he's opting not to at this moment trying to make sure that that tank does not shred apart his entire army he is going to go ahead and back off a secret ninja base is in the distance it's not really a secret ninja base but it's kind of a, a different style of uh base going on he's got some probes sending across the map to his next base which will be over here terran's repairing that command center and leaving them over there <laughs> Which is stronger? True story. Double Colossus are going to move across the map with all these Stalkers and Zealots. And this Warp Prism looks pretty. Oh, Terran opting for a possible Doom Drop. Oh, boy. Oh, did he see it, though? He might have seen it. He might have seen it. I'm not 100% sure if he saw what was coming or what's going. Ooh, this is a double drop. If he does not have enough units. Speaking of not enough units... If this Protoss pushes... Oh, Protoss is not opting to push. I don't know if he saw something or what. There's a couple disruptors with this army now. Going for basically everything I said earlier. There's a decent army at that base. And there is two medevacs flying into the main. There is a cannon, but the stem marines are going to be able to make their way into this base. There is a bunch of zealots being warped in as we speak. This Terran army is going to try to do as much damage as physically possible, but he's going to have to opt out. And it does look like he's going to drop into this base instead and do a little bit of damage. He is going to pick the cannon. These stalkers failed to blink into the mineral line. These medevacs are going to get picked off. These marines are also going to get picked off. A couple marines are going to be dropped off at this further side base. And there is going to be more warp and just zealots of doom. Colossus are going to come in and these stalkers are going to blink and try to pick off the medevacs. They're about to pick off the wrong medevac almost able to pick off the medevacs gonna try to be able to blink again and it looks like he's gonna get one possibly two and gets both medevacs warp prism is over here across the map the viking it, vikings are gonna try to pick it off but it does look like the warp prism was aware and it oh nope was not aware <laughs> was definitely not aware was trying to get more units now he's not able to because of these vikings but these vikings are just parked after killing it and that is a very rough spot for these vikings to be in these vikings are gonna go boom and this medevac as well. All air units. Repeat, all air units. These zealots are going to move into the Terran army. And the Terran army is going to stem up. They are going to fight, but there's no medevacs to heal them. And they are just going to be shredded apart. These colossus slowly coming on top of them. And Tommy Pickles is going to take building killers. In the bottom right corner. Representing uh, Rizm, we have Tommy Pickles as the purple Protoss. In the top left corner representing T Gosu B we have elite slayer and you do got M&M casting I swear I go way too fast sometimes but it does look like elite slayer is like I don't really want to play this out to be honest so when in doubt proxy racks the hell out <laughs> and that is what he's going to do he built a supply depot a weird little spot this Terran trying to build happy little trees right now Tommy Pickles like hmm gonna go ahead and scout across the map by the time he scouts it should be pretty far into the racks timing double racks not opting for triple racks pretty surprising but double racks indeed probe is gonna move across the map we gotta see what the reaction is whenever he sees that these uh, this uh, proxy racks are here so he's going to scout it pretty shortly. I'm walking here. There's a gas being taken, so we could assume it's going to be Reaper. Double Reaper. Looks like it is going to be Double Reaper. Protoss is going to notice there's nothing going on here, and Cybernetic Score is going to come out for the Protoss. Going to go scout now if Probe's like, oh no, this better not be one of them Prox racks. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, Probe tried. Wrong spot. He's like, hmm. Oh no. He canceled the other direction. It looks like he's still going to go that direction, but it's going to be a little bit late. By the time he gets there, 
Oh, he's... Oh, he's opting for Marauders. He's not even going for Reapers. This is going to be a Marauder shove, guys. I'm not sure how this is going to go for the Protoss, but it does look like... No. It does look like we... Forgot the button already, apparently. Uh oh. Nope. I don't know what I'm doing. He is going to try to stop these bunkers from happening in his base. <laughs> but there is a couple marauders coming up the ramp. Coming in hot, boys. Looking at the vision from each player, mainly because I derped my hotkeys just a little bit here, and I'm not sure the fix on WCS mode. <laughs> I keep pushing the wrong button. I was just trying to add it to where it said best of three, but I made mistake, boys. Now I'm having vision of the players, and maybe... See what all Let's have a blast. I'm not sure the button pressed to fix this to where it's everyone viewed. There it is, it's the E button. In case anybody's wondering how basic of a button that is, E for everyone. Definitely not uh, EA, EA Sports, it's in the game. It's not what that E stands for. Oh, we're pulling the boys. What is this? Is this going to be a Marauder boy push? Pump up the jams. Go ahead. Pump it up. We're going to move these. We're going to move these here. SEVs and Marauders right into the base. They're going to go right up this ramp. And he sees that there is a sentry. And there is... Oh. That's a sentry. <laughs> and these Marauders are like, please let us shoot you. The boys are going to try their best, but there is just not much to be done here. This Protoss walled it right on off. He is trying to pick off the sentry, but there is three shield batteries here, and the Protoss is in just in really good shape. These Marauders are slowly pushing in. Will they be able to kill the Protoss? But the Protoss is going to bring the boys to the boys' fight, and the boys, the boys are going to crack cold ones on top of each other, and this is like Hank Hill all over again. Yes, mate. Let's go, brothers. And the Protoss is going to be able to surround, and GG is called, and Tommy... In the top left corner, representing Risen, we got Tommy Pickles as the purple Protoss. In the bottom right corner, representing Risen as well, we have Neverwinter as the yellow Zerg. So we got a ZVP. Boy, do I love me some Zerg gameplay. Won't lie, I'm pretty biased. I always usually root for the Zerg player. But you never know. Sometimes I end up rooting for other races as well, but just really like Zerg overall, just because I'm so used to it. Ooh, spawning. Oh, okay. I was about to say. Did go spawning pool first. Opting not to go for the second base right now. This could be really painful for the Protoss player. I'm not sure when he took his pull. It looked like a relatively early pull, but I don't know if it was like 12 pull, 13 pull, 14 pull, etc. Didn't really see that part. Since it's finishing relatively quickly, I would assume it's close to a 12 pull. Which, he is going to go ahead and try to wall that off, probably. Sixlings are on their way. It could be in 12 pull into macro, depending on how he plays this out. We will see. If he continues to make lings, it'll be all in. If he doesn't, probably be a macro style. We'll see. Looks like he's going to opt for macro style. He's just going to try to do a little bit damage with that early early six lings. Move across the map with him. He isn't going to opt for gas. He is going to opt for queen and, and a base. But pretty interesting. Something I need to try out. I think it was the 12 pull, if I were to guess. I've been meaning to try this out. I haven't done it yet. I'm sure that Protosses in my league would overreact and build a whole bunch of stuff, so it'd probably be worth it to do just to make them waste a whole bunch of minerals right off the beginning. He did end up canceling the warp gate. The Zealot is going to just kite him back. He is just going <laughs> to 
He is trying to opt him back. He's trying really hard to get through that wall, which he finally realizes that's what he's trying to do, but he's trying to take his time. He is opting for an adept to come out as well. Zealot trying its darndest. This is <laughs> this poor cybernetics core is trying hard to keep a hold, but it it does look like these six lings are gonna try to pick it off. It might be able to pick it off before the upgrade. We'll see. The adept is gonna be able to come in here and be able to do some damage to these little wings. Run, wings, run! The, f the little ants of doom are going to run back to their spawn, brother. Never underestimate Tommy motherfucking Pickle. Yeah, brother. Never underestimate the power of the scout's code. There is going to be a starport out for Tommy Pickles. Looking to probably do a little bit of damage, I assume, with an oracle. That'd probably be my assumption. It is going to be Oracle. So he is going to try to opt to do a little bit of damage to to the uh, Zerg player using an Oracle. We'll see if he ends up getting air defense or if he's just going to kind of defend it to the best of his ability. He's already lost a couple lings there. He is going to try to phase through. We'll see if he ends up finishing it. It does not look like he's going to opt to do it. He is just going to back to his third. Nothing really to pick off here. So he's just going to take Larva. Ooh is trying to stop him from killing the larva but is going to be able to get a hold of the larva it's going to get a few picked off on the lings that's quite a few kills for these little boys by taking just a little bit of damage they were able to kill some lings off <laughs> just being a little bit annoying not quite too annoying uh overlord is going to fly in here the, the oracle is going to come in pick off three four five that's a decent pick off Five drones is not terrible, and a little bit of a pull on the drones that was kind of left out for a moment. Oh, gasless opener. I do agree. Gasless opener, indeed. He Well, I believe he 12 pulled into uh, macro, which is probably one of the builds that you do go gasless in. Overlord is going to try to hide itself. Neat little trick is you can hide him right up in here and still have vision up in there. Lings are going to move up. These adepts are going to be able to pick off the lings. I don't know if he'll lose one adept though. He is going to lose one adept for those lings. So I don't know if it was worth it in the end for the poor Protoss. But it didn't really react in time. It does look like he's going to get the adept upgrade. So going for a Oracle adept timing. This could be rather annoying for the uh, Zerg player. Zerg player does have spores at every base so... Except for the main base. Does I have one in the main? Interesting. Looks like Phoenix is gonna pick off an overlord. May the may we spam the overlord a few times in the chat. Just to say our prayers for the dear overlord. These two oracles trying to get in the base, but unable to, so they're gonna go ahead and back right on off. Protoss is gonna opt to go make a third base right now. I don't think Zerg will be able to know either because of the Phoenixes on the map doing a good job at keeping him from knowing what's going on. He is going to opt for Hydralisks now. So it looks like it's going to be Hydralisks versus Adept. With some Immortals mixed in here, it looks like he's prepping for that good old Roach play. Or he just likes Immortals. They are tanky little boys. Don't blame him. A couple more gateways going to come out for Tommy Pickles. He had a decent amount of economy to spend. Trying to get this creep spread across the map in a neat little order. Painting happy little trees across the map, one creep tumor at a time. Four adepts are going to come out to the bottom side of the map and try to get a little bit of pickoffs on this third base of the Zerg player. The oracles are picking at the queen, so the hydralists are going to move up. It is a distraction. It's a trap. The adepts are going to move in. We are looking at two pickoffs right off the back. And three, four... He's got four pickoffs. He's thinking about shading right on in. Will he still shade? He did end up shading in the end. He is not going to quite lose an adept. He is going to back off with five adepts picked. He is going to end up losing an adept after all. A little bit surprising on that. Didn't look like he was going to lose him, but he does decide to opt to go right on into the base. Will he be able to get more drones? It's looking like he's going to get eight. He got eight drones total. Not the best pickups I've ever seen, but it's not really the worst either. I think that that's a decent amount of minerals picked up. Almost almost that of a base worth. 
if not a little bit close. So. Actually, it's a little bit over, though. It's a little bit over a base worth. I guess for Protoss, it would be a base worth. Hydralists are going to be able to move in here. The Lings are going to move around. The Shell Batteries are going to try to help these units. These Adepts are trying to spawn in as we speak. Some Zealots are coming in to help the Madness, but this Pylon is going to go down, and these Immortals are going to try to help kill these Hydralists running at these Hydralists at top speed. These Zealots are going in, but they are going to go ahead and back off, going to rebuild the Pylon and get ready for another push. Robotics Bay is going to finish, so he is working towards either more Immortals or possibly a Warp Prism. I think it would be a good time to get a Warp Prism. Thinking about breaking the rocks, decides not to gonna back off just a little bit and pick off the hallucinated phoenix colossus is gonna be made as we speak does not look like he ever got spire as well double oracle gonna come in and get a couple picks four drones are gonna be killed not the best trade ever but still doing his annoying little protoss things and getting rid of some of that economy one step at a time small step for man big leap for economy these links and hydras are going to move across the map. It looks like this oracle is going to move into the base once again to do a little bit of poke. This time coming from the gas side. Either that or he's going in the main. Oh, he's going in the main and there's no spore in the main. Will he do it? Will he do it? He's just, he's just scouting. He wasn't even doing damage. Just getting a little bit of vision. There is going to be a spore at this base and he is going to lose it. Looking across the map, the Hydras are doing a little bit of damage. I was a little bit misfocused, and it looks like the Zealot is going to get picked up. There is a Colossus now with this army. Will he be able to snipe these Hydra lists? And it looks like he is going to be able to snipe them. The Adept's doing quite a bit of damage with their upgrades, slowly moving towards this Hydra list army, but he's going to go ahead and opt to back off. Slowly trying to get some more units going for himself. Neverwinter just kind of doing pretty good so far with the damage he has dealt. Looking at the graphs, we are very similar in economy. Both players very close as far as workers and army. At this moment, I'm not sure who's in the better spot. I feel like Protoss's army is slowly getting to a better spot. But he needs to probably get some more zealots in this mixture because it's going to be very painful soon without him. Couple of uh, changelings coming to join the zealot army. Going to help him boost his numbers. He just kind of ignored it, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be. A couple of Hydralists are going to be at his next base, and he's going to go ahead and take them out. Going to turn around, but there are Banelings coming in hot onto this Protoss army. These Immortals are getting down to no energy. These Colossus are slowly sniping. There's four Colossus now, and these Hydralists are slowly getting picked. This should be really painful for the Zerg. He's trying to stop that base, but he is going to lose all of his Hydralists for this, and that is very painful for the Zerg player. A lot of Hydralists lost there, but there are a bunch of Lings, but there are Zealots coming from the other side of the map to be able to stop this. This is actually really bad for the Zerg player. All of a sudden, this has changed momentum pretty fast. Uh, if I were in this Zerg's favor, I would probably build a couple Corruptors. Doesn't really have a whole bunch of army to shoot up, or any really for that matter. I don't think anything in there shoots up other than if there's a sentry, but I don't see a sentry. So, right, one stalker amongst this army he has one thing to shoot up, so... Corruptors would have been a really good choice if he could, but these Hydralists are going to try to fight in. There is a Warp Prism now, so he will be able to warp in units, and here he goes. He's going to be bringing the boys, picking off this Overlord with the One Stalker, slowly moving around the creep, taking out the creep. He is going to get swarmed here. He is going to get swarmed, but the, the Colossus are going to slowly kite back, and the Zealots are going to move forward. The Hydralists are going to slowly kite, but these Colossus are going to slowly snipe towards the base. A bunch more Stalkers spawn now. If he was to go Corruptor, there would be a bunch of Stalkers to snipe him. The Colossus slowly pushing in, and these Hydralists are just frying up these links are not even helping there's not much he can do swarm hosts are being made but it's a little too late for that hydra is still being popped but it does look like tommy pickles might be able to take this first game 14 drones are going to drop in gg well played is called and tommy pickles takes the first match in the top right corner representing frism we have tommy pickles in the bottom left corner representing Risen as well, we have Neverwinter. Now, after that first game, let's see what's going to change in this game. So, the first game, Neverwinter opted for a early 12-pull macro 6-ling attack. Let's see if he opts for that again. It looks like it's going to be similar. I don't know if it was 12-pull the first time. It might have been this the first time, or first time too. Looks like he's not going to change anything to do with that as well. 
gas is going to get pulled. It looks like he's going for the same build just about this time around. So we'll see if anything changes with the way he plays his style. Protoss is going to check for the second base. See, there's still no second base. Be like, hmm, what is this? Are you doing this again? He's like, oh, nope. Looks, sees the spawning pool, no gas. He's like, ah, like, really? You really going to be like this, man? You really going to be like this, man? And Protoss just be sitting, chilling, hoping to get another Zealot out to try and defend this. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I will look into it. Let's see. I don't see multiple discs, so I'm very sorry, sir. But I won't be able to ban him until I know something's up. Plus, I would need proof somehow to know that 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 you're the real stilly disc if there was multiple stilly discs. This is like pointing at each other and saying, I'm the real stilly disc, you know? But onward, we have Lings coming across the map again. This time he, he went opted. Oh no, I thought he opted for a complete wall off, but he did not. He has a Zealot and an Adept about to finish again. He is going to try to break his way through with these Lings. The Zealot's doing a really good job at baiting these Lings in. So it is going to be able to pick him, but the Adept is here in time. He was going to wall off, decides not to in the end. The sixth Ling is just not really doing much damage against this. Neither Stilly Disc has said anything bad, so no reason to ban either of them. True story. I don't think either have. I haven't really seen much from either Stilly Disc, so I do apologize. I, I just can't do anything at this moment. That is weird that they're trolling you with the fake name of you, though. If Revolt wins a series, I think he's favorite to win the whole tourney. Oh, really? Well, then I got to root for the Zerg then, because I want Neverwinter to be the be the fan favorite, you know? Just because he's Zerg, man. Can't have Protosses running the show. Looks like he is going to... Oh, almost got one drone. Oh, almost got one drone. Oh, he got one drone. One drone in the end. Two drones in the end. Two boys went down during the making of that film. Going back to this base. Just got some Overlord Vision. Working on Charge Lot this time. Well, I guess he got Charge Lot last time too, but maybe he's opting for some more Zealots here in the early game. But he seemed to do fine in the last game. I don't think he's really going to change much up on the side of the Protoss. I wonder if the Zerg is going to change some stuff. We got Detective Sherlock Holmes out in the chat. Got me distracted. These Zerlings trying to do a little bit of damage, but looks like the Sentry's not going to let him do any damage to him. He's like, nah, Sentry. Sorry, Stilly Disc. Or still Fly Disc. Oh, Still Fly. Discord, I assume. That's what that stands for, maybe? I don't know. I just realized it's Still Fly saying that. Oof. Sorry, Still Fly. Lings are going back to the creep where they're safe. Looks like he's opting for lings and roaches at this point.
Oh, a bunch of zealots coming across the map. Are these lings and roaches going to be able to do much? They are going to move across, and these zealots are going to do their darndest against these lings. This is, is quite a bit of lings. Zealots are going to be able to clean them up, but the, are the roaches going to be able to escape? The charge lots are going to slowly charge into the roaches. The roaches are trying to back off, but there is not enough creep here. Just enough creep to be like sad day, brothers, sad days. Roaches are slowly pushing in and kiting back, but unable to keep these zealots at bay. These zealots are just coming in at mass warp. Looks like he's going to bring a few stalkers to help with the ranged ability. And this is going to be some dead roaches. Neverwinter having to back off a little bit, wishing he probably had a little bit of banelings right about now, but he does not even have the baneling nest to my knowledge and it does look like these zealots are slowly gonna belittle these roaches and these roaches just trying to back off unable to do enough damage to these zealots the roaches still kiting back they are going to get a bit of a surround with these spawns but there is going to be more units spawned in for the side of tommy pickles it looks like he's opting for more stalkers but i don't think he's going to be able to stop this after all going to go ahead and recall and Warp Prism did pick up one of those stalkers. The Zerg army is going to move across the map. That's a little bit scary for Tommy Pickles because he did lose quite a bit with the surround. At first, I thought uh, Tommy Pickles was going to be able to outpower the Zerg until he popped out all those units and was able to surround him just a little bit. So now, if he opts to fight, he's going to want to make some Ravagers here to be able to poke down the... Uh, the units here in the middle, I think. But it looks like he's just going to opt to push with Roaches and Lings instead. I think Ravager might be the better way to go, but it does look like he is pushing through the cybernetics core. It is going to get picked down right now. Warp Prism, oh, Warp Prism dropping out some damage here at the third base. They're both on even bases, so they're both pretty even in supply. Oh, it's supply, uh, resources. Supply is actually quite distant from each other. Similar workers, not similar army. <clears throat> Neverwinter making quite a few units. It looks like he's opting to go and do some damage. Coming across the map with a couple Ravagers this time. Maybe going to morph more Ravagers along the way. Has a decent amount of gas. It's not a bad idea to make some Ravagers right about now. He's going to need the poke damage once he comes in. But it does look like he is going to march across the map with Roach Ravager Ling. And he is going to go ahead and move into this third and see that it's being made. And probably going to go ahead and pick that off relatively quickly. And he is going to get that... Oh, and he does not get it. He actually canceled it at the last second. Tommy Pickles is going to slowly back up just a little bit, knowing he's in a little bit of danger. Need to get a little bit of upgrades on the way. And we got GT Kung coming in with the follow. Thank you, brother. Much appreciated. Put my boots and my overalls on. Welcome to the stream, brother. Hope you love the cast. Looking over at the third base of the Zerg. A couple drones are going to be killed these roaches are going to try to stop these zealots they are coming in hot and these zealots are going to try to back out and get away with their lives poor zealots are being chased down it looks like the protoss is going to or the zerg is going to move down and collapse right on top of these zealots just making sure they can't get away but with the warp prism it doesn't look like that's going to be a thing he can stop this protoss is having a little bit of trouble keeping his third base. This time he looks like he is going to opt to try and defend it, but he's going to need more units if he's going to defend this. I just feel like he's in a really sh in a really short spot right now without the uh without the units. It looks like he is going to opt to try and push down just a little bit with the roaches, but he is going to be able to wrap around with both sides on top of Tommy Pickles. And Tommy Pickles is going to do a recall. Will he be able to save much of the units? It does look like he saves much of the units, and he's able to get out alive with the units. Oscar, 77, thank you for the follow, brother. These Roach Ravager are going to push into the base. It does look like these Stalkers and Immortals are going to be able aren't going to be able to stop this for long. The Sentry's trying their best, but they are going to pick off the gateways. And this is a very, very painful attack. It looks like they are pushing back and forth against each other at this very moment. He is going to stop the one gateway from being able to make units. That is a pretty big play for the most part, even though it's pretty strong. This Protoss army is going to try to uh, do as much damage as physically possible.
Looking over at Tommy Pickles here. He is going to stay back at his base, but this is really rough for him. The supply is slowly gaining some... Gaining some, uh... Some momentum, and it does look like these Roach Ravagers are going to become at a maximum peak very soon. Protoss is trying his very best to get a good army coming across, but this time just unable to get things set up in time. There is an upgrade being forced out, but I don't think he's going to be able to get it in time. He is trying to make a base again, but there is Lings across the map, and they are coming in quick and hot. These Roach Ravagers are going to slowly start to divide a little bit. Protoss is going to try to defend this base, and this has got to be the, the defend. If he doesn't defend this third base, he's going to be in really rough shape. He is dropping a couple zealots over at this base, trying to pick it off. It is slightly misplaced as well in the first place. He's doing him a favor. Needs to cancel this. If he doesn't cancel this, it's going to be rough. It's misplaced. I think. Unless I'm imagining it. That looks, that looks wrong. I'm pretty sure that's wrong. I could be wrong, but it looks wrong. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I just have no clue about that. Lings are moving across the map. Lings and Roach Ravenger are going to move across and stop these zealots. These zealots not quite going to be able to snipe that base. Unfortunate for... Unfortunate for the uh, Protoss trying to get a quick snipe on the base because he's been held at bay for so long. A couple Archons are going to be morphed here. It's going to be a very rough fight for the Protoss, I believe. He is almost close to having that second upgrade done. I would wait just a little bit longer. Do not get caught out here. The Stalkers are going to try to pick off as many units as possible. Archons are going to push into this. Roach Army is slowly going to move into this, but they are kind of in a choke point, and they are slowly going into this army, and it does look like he needs to split off pretty well here, and it looks like the Protoss is slowly going to shred through this. Oh my god. Did Tommy Pickles just win this fight? It looks like he did a decent amount of damage. He is going to go back and around. At this point, he might be taking the economic lead by trying to make sure that his base is saturated before he is moving out waiting for the second upgrade i did not expect that kind of damage coming out from the protoss army at this time i thought that the zerg had enough until he walked through that choke and all of his units just slowly walked in like it was a maze runner into a uh into a human centipede going on brother This Protoss army is going to move into the Roach Ravagers, and these Corrosive Biles are going to come out. They are going to splash onto the Archons, but he's slowly pushing his way into the space. Is he going to have enough? It does look like the Protoss is going to back off in fear. It looks like he did not quite have enough to bite off more than he could chew. He is going to blast stuff off the ramp and get a few more pickoffs, but he needs to back off. It looks like he is still going to struggle to get through this here, get through this here uh, doorway. But with that being said, this Protoss army is doing a hell of a lot of damage for what it is and what I saw. And I'm not even seeing Colossus coming. It looks like he's opting for storms, which is not a bad idea. It does look like he's going to try to take this fight. And it looks like he's going to split the army to the best of his ability. A couple corrosive shots going to come out, almost connecting with the Archons. Are not quite going to connect. <laughs> Zerg doing quite a bit of damage with the Hydralists and Ravagers. He is slowly pushing into this Protoss army. The Protoss army's slowly losing a little bit of momentum needing to back off and get a little bit more boys these fights have been really back and forth the supply getting so close every time and zealots are going to appear out of nowhere and slowly snipe down the hydra list these roshan hydras are slowly kiting back but they are not going to have enough against charge lots and it does look like this protest army is slowly going to go to shred through this roach Ravager Hydralisk army, and it looks like the Protoss is slowly belittling down this Zerg. The Zerg is trying his darndest. These Lings are going to get a few pickoffs. It's so close. It's so back and forth. There's more Zealots. The Zealots are coming in, and Zealots are going to shred through these Lings like they were no other. And the Hydralisks are slowly cutting back. The Zealots are going to push right through, and it looks like murder, murder, murder across this screen. And there has been so much bloodshed 
on this map so far. This is a hell of a fight coming out from both players. Both players wanting to keep this game going. We know that Tommy Pickles currently has the first game in the lead. So if Neverwinter drops this one, that means that Tommy Pickles is going to go to the finals. So Neverwinter does want to win this one so he can have a shot to be in the finals. Looking across the map, the Lings were going to move across, but it does look like he opts to come right on back. He did not quite feel like he could move across with a decent amount of damage. The Protoss is going to push and stop this base from being made. And with that being said, this base gets picked off a couple drones picked as well. Banelings trying to move across. Zerglings are going to move across and try to stop that base as well. Both players mimicking each other in a certain way. The Zealots are going to move into the Banelings. Should have waited just a moment for the Charge Lots to come in. And the Charge Lots are going to stop the Lings across the map, but the base is still canceled. Drones are being picked up. 11 drones are going to be picked up and GG well played. Good luck was called and Tommy... Right, you want to do an introduction on whichever side? Spawning in the top right corner, the Eternal Empire. As the pink Zerg, it's Barks. And in the bottom left corner, representing Ryzen under Cinder, we have Tommy Pickles as the red Protoss. Both these players seem to have really interesting styles, like, all the way through. I think it's going to be a really fun match. Plus, since I'm a Zerg player, I kind of favor Zerg match matches more than any other, just because I understand them better. Yeah, I definitely get that feel. Um, okay, so we have a hatch block. Bark sends out a drone for the third. Ooh, oh, he's not going to take... Okay, he's going to double back and uh, just take a delayed hatch at his natural. Oh, a little bit well, of a fake out there. I've done that a few times. It, it kind of hurts a little bit sometimes, but it happens. Looks pretty basic build so far for the Protoss. I mean, I don't really play Protoss, but for the most part, it looks pretty standard. Did uh, the Zerg opt for the uh, spawning pool before the block or after the block? I assume before, since he's got these links. Yeah, out it was so before the block. Okay. Well, I mean, after the block, before he threw down the hatch. Uh, okay. So, Barks, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Bark's going for a little bit of a bling attack here. Um, okay, <laughs> I was going to say, Revolt's Zealot was out of position, but he moved it back into the wall. <laughs> so, Bark's next play is going to be to get as much damage as he can on the Cyber Core, uh, do this delicate dance with the Zealot, which he's losing right now. Um, two swipes going off on one of the lings, and the timer's expired. The Adept is out. It's going to shade... Oh, okay, so Revolt's not going to shade out onto the map, actually. Hmm. Uh, perhaps doesn't want to get surrounded. Revolt isn't going for a second Adept yet. He's going right into Stargate. I think he was expecting some kind of all-in for Barks. He's misread the situation severely. Barks takes a third, and there's no Ravager attack, no Ling Flood, anything coming. So this Stargate I is... Uh, he d he did this against Neverwinter too, and Neverwinter did the same uh, starting point. I think he just does it for the Oracle early, but I'm not sure. Did, did Neverwinter take a third, or did Neverwinter? Yeah, he took a third. I think that's just uh, Tommy's opener. He just goes with the Oracle early. It seems like because he did the same thing. He would he brought the six slings across the map and then attacked the Cybernetics, and the Zealot played the Dance Arena, and then the Oracle came. Though I will admit, the uh, spores are out pretty early for Bark, so did Bark scout it? <laughs> or did he not scout it? He has not scouted it uh, yet. He has not scouted it, yeah. Just a well, good okay, timing. okay. He, he didn't scout the Stargate, but the Oracle did fly through the Overlord. Um, oh, okay. Wait, did he though? Now I'm psyching myself out. No, he didn't scout the Stargate. He just yeah, kind of read... Know. 
what Revolt was up to. Yeah. That's what I was wondering, because I didn't see anything that gave it away, but he had spores up pretty relatively at a good time, but he might just know the timing as well. Barks well, is not invested in overlord speed, so he's going to beat out uh, two of these overlord F in the chat for them. This is going to supply block him quite a bit, actually. He's going straight into Hydrogen. He sees the Robo for Revolt, though. So this is probably going to be Lean Bane Hydra uh, against yeah. the... No, well, he has a Ridge Warren. Is this like Broach Hydra? Is this going to take us way, way back? I think it might be Roach Hydra after all. He might be going for a, like... Maybe he wants the Roaches to handle the Zealots and the Hydras to do the damage, but it does look like he's opting for that instead of Baneling Nest, which is interesting. I've done it a few times, but not too often as of late. Two Oracles trying to get some damage done, but not much they can do. Just going to get a couple pickoffs before retreating. Almost lost one of the Oracles. Hydralisk range is going to be researched, so it looks like he's focusing more on that than the uh, Roach one right now. So maybe he's not going for Roaches. Maybe he was afraid of something. Unless he's going late Roaches. Economy wise, the Zerg's sitting in a good spot right now. The Protoss will be kicking into third base as well very shortly, though. Twilight Council's dropped. I assume he's going to go for uh, Charge Lot Zealots and then work towards a decent ground army. At least that's what he did against Neverwinter. Which seem to have a similar build. Yeah, um, well, he's also getting up a Robo Bay, so uh, it's probably going to be a couple Colossi yep. or maybe Disruptors uh, against the Hydra of Barks. I'm thinking, thinking Colossi. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Oh, he is opting for Roach Speed after all, so maybe he is thinking about going Roach Hydra after all. I thought maybe he did it to try and protect from something, but it doesn't look like that was the, uh... Oh! <laughs> the trap caught one Ling in it. <laughs> Poor Ling. He's gonna have to sit there in the shame. That's a decent little clump of units right there. <clears throat> but there is quite a bit coming across the map, which he sees with the vision from the Oracle. Got a couple roaches, but not too, too many. He's got like three roaches to tank the front. Looks like he was checking to see if he got a fourth or not. Oh... That's not what you want to happen right there. A couple of the units are going to get stunned up here. They are going to try to get the gate, but the sentries are going to lock them in. This is painful. Lost a little bit of units there. Almost loses that roach as well. Yeah. I don't know what to do versus Toss. These guys aren't bad mannering each other. They've known each other for years and years. Uh, so yeah. I would expect a little bit of banter in the chat. Yeah. Funny thing is, uh, Tommy was saying that uh, Barks would uh, easily romple stomp him, so. Yeah, but I mean, it's to be expected from these two players to say that the other one's going to raffle stomp them. Both of them, that's like their way of dealing with stress in tournaments. Um, yeah. I don't so, blame them. Barks 
runs a link forward to trigger the stasis trap. It gets burned down. Hydra thinks about triggering it, but it's gonna it's gonna swerve home. Did a Tokyo drift around that corner? <laughs> it just wanted uh, to see what's up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think he's making something across the map here. Oh no, those are oracles. My bad. I, it looked like he was building stuff. I was like, what's he building over there? <laughs> Another Nexus is going to come out for the Protoss. Pretty economic focus game so far. The only thing I fear right now is that the Zerg's upgrades are... Well, I guess they're not too far behind, but they are a little bit behind the second upgrade of the Protoss. Which could hurt in the long run. Opting for Lurker, though, against some Oracle play, that might be hard to deal with, or hard to use efficiently yeah um so revolts going to continuously keep casting revelation on these lurkers which does of course reveal them even if burrowed uh barks is going to struggle against this he's he's often not, uh... uh yeah he's just gonna go what what is he I don't understand Bark's army positioning here. I guess he's going to try to catch Revolt. Yeah, on the there's... retreat, but there's too many angles. Like, yeah. Look how far away the Lurkers are, and he's so far off creep. He hasn't creep spread at all. Yeah, and the Observer is going to be able to see these Lurkers that are sitting in the ground slightly behind him. He's not even going to give him the time of day to get those on him. GG is called. Revolt okay. takes game number one smoothly. No, you're fine. I understand. I'll go ahead and let you do the first cast again. Or the first. In the top left. As the pink Zerg. From Risen Competitive. It's mm, Baby Barks. And in the bottom right corner, representing the Risen community, we have Tommy Pickle picked a pickled pepper. Tommy Pickles. As the red Protoss. Had to challenge your little fun baby barks comment. Plus, I said well, that. Well, that's one. just his name, bro. It's, it's me, baby barks. Baby barks. Not to be confused with baby borks. He is tree, not, not dog. Or is he dog? Why not? Okay, so we have a pool first from barks. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna get immediately scouted. Now, there's a couple things he can do here. He's banking Arva too early. Oh no. I don't know why he has these larvae banked. He could have poured another two drones off of this. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's going to do. It looks like he's just going to straight up go. He's going for the all in. I'm pretty sure on this one. This is too late for gas. I mean. I'm not sure then. Okay, he's gone for a proxy hatch. But I feel like you need a roach worm on top of uh, Revolt has pulled six probes, which will kill the hatch before it finishes. That this is, some... is severely delayed mining time for Revolt, but, um, okay, he pulls one of the probes off. That's actually pretty <laughs> big. It's going to let this hatch continue for a little while. Wait, this Bark's not going to cancel? Cancel, Bark's, cancel, cancel. Oh my god, that was a kill. GG. Okay. Uh, I'll start off this time in the bottom left corner. Representing Risen, we have Tommy Pickles as the red Protoss. And in the top right... It's our pink Zerg. Bark. Well, is captain of Risen competitive, so he's uh he's taken one of his underlings to school. But that's kind of the point of this tournament as well. So both these guys are in the running for coaching. Both of them will receive it from RNG Pro players, whether they like it or not. <laughs> uh, but first place is going to get two hours of coaching. Second place is going to 
get one hour of coaching, of course, their coaches are going to be dependent on their race. Um, so that will be announced to them at a later time. But also, $25 on the line. Yep. Second place is only going to take home 10 uh, You guys didn't see it on stream, but the third place match was forfeited, so... Oh, no! Wait, let me pull up the bracket. That's right, I'm not on stream, so I can do this. Uh, I mean, consult my memory. <laughs> Never Winter from Team Gosu took home third place. Yep. So, congratulations to him for taking home that ten dollar third place prize. He played some pretty good games today. Overall. Yeah, yeah. What uh what was his run like? His what? His run in the tournament? I think it was pretty solid. I don't know if he dropped very many matches, if any at all, really. I think he did really well all the way through. Yeah, he he did pretty good uh, up until Pickles, I think, and he even did good against Pickles too. So it, he's a pretty good player. I liked his Zerg play. Nice. Oh, these well, little... perfectly balanced as all things should be, right? Uh, yeah. Two Zergs and the Protoss in the finals. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a thing. Turn, turn going out. Okay, so Barks is trying for a Baneling bust here. It's a stalker in the wall for Revolt. Not sure how I feel about this. The Baneling should hit right before the shield battery finishes. They need to go. They're not going. They're not going. Rebort mission. <laughs> Abort mission. This is going to be oh, painful. Barks is getting more all in here as well as he gets out more lings. Six banelings. I mean, shield batteries don't really matter if the unit dies instantaneously. But he's going to crash oh. the oracle out. Three banelings. Oh, okay, only two. Yeah, it's not enough to break through anymore. GG is called in revolt. 